Exercise 7. Koala. Good morning, everyone. In today's lecture, I want to look at one of Australia's famous and most loved animals, the koala. The koala is the Australian teddy bear and is the largest member of the phalangers family. The koala looks like a teddy bear. It is two and a half feet long, with ears seeming as if they were stuck on, beady eyes, and no tail. Its dense, woolly fur is blue-gray in color and was used commercially for fur until koalas were almost exterminated. They are pouched mammals, of course not bears at all, but closely related to the phalangers. Koalas spend most of all their lives in the eucalyptus trees, feeding on their leaves. Their toes are armed with sharp claws and their fingers are divided into two groups. The split in the hand, coming between the index and middle finger, instead of between thumb and fingers as in our hand. The great toe is thumb-like. All of these features aid in climbing. Koalas, although usually slow and deliberate in movement, are able to spring from one upright branch to another with surprising skill. Their babies are carried in the pouch at first, then it clings to the fur of the mother's back, riding piggyback until it is almost as large as the mother. Koalas become quite tame and they are great attractions at the various Australian zoos and parks. Exercise 8. Stamp Collecting The collecting of postage stamps is a hobby that interests people of all ages and all walks of life. It has countless followers in every land. There are over 2 million stamp collectors in the United States and Canada, and among these are a great many boys and girls. The most valuable stamp in the world is the one-cent British Guiana Magenta of 1856. Only one copy is known to exist. It is valued at about $50,000. There are other stamps worth several thousand dollars, while many others are valued at hundreds of dollars. Yet, most stamps are not expensive. There are hundreds of stamps worth a few dollars, and many more hundreds that you may buy for a few cents. So you see that stamp collecting is not merely a rich man's hobby. Each stamp collector finds his own stamps fascinating, no matter how much or how little money he spends on them. The reason is that there is always a story behind postage stamps. The countries of the world use them as a means of telling the world about their industries, their culture, their great men. They also use stamps to celebrate important events in their history. So while a stamp collector is enjoying his hobby, he is also storing up knowledge about all kinds of things from every corner of the globe. Usually, a beginner collects everything that comes his way. This is the best method, as in this way he will become acquainted with a wide variety of stamps. Later on, he may decide to specialize in certain kinds. But unless he has already collected all sorts of postage stamps, he will not have enough general information about his hobby to enjoy it to the full. Exercise 9. Get the right food to stay slim. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our regular program on health issues. Today I'm going to talk about ways of staying healthy and slim. You know, some people seem to eat to stay alive, while for others eating is a hobby. Do you enjoy your food? Are you careful about what you eat? Or do you eat what you enjoy? Here is a very simple way to choose the foods that will keep you slim 
and in shape and feeling great. And you don't have to count calories. Let's divide the main types of foods into three groups according to their calorie concentration. First, we will use red for food that is high in calories. Secondly, we'll use yellow for food that is medium in calories. Then, we will use the green color for the food that is low in calories. Now, let's look at the red group. You will find sugar, chocolate, cakes, puddings, honey, jam, cream, butter, chips, peanuts, and soft drinks. Because these foods are high in calories, you should stop and think before you eat them. In fact, you should try to avoid them as much as possible. Moving on to the yellow group, you will find fatty meats, sausages, liver, eggs, milk, cheese, nuts, wine, beer, and salt. When you eat these kinds of food, you should be careful and not eat too much of them. Then we come to the last group, the green one. This group includes fresh fruit, salads, vegetables, seafood, yogurt, skimmed milk, bread, low-calorie soft drinks, tea, and water. When you eat these foods, you can go ahead and eat lots of them. You should use these three groups to discover a sensible balance that suits you. Remember, it is easier to stay slim than to lose weight once you have put it on. A little care choosing what you eat and enough regular exercise will go a long way to get you feeling great. Exercise 10. Our Body Systems Our body is a wonderful machine. It has more parts and can do more types of work than any machine in the world. That is why we say that man is the supreme living thing in this world. Well, now let's have a look at our body systems. I'm going to go through them quickly, and then we will have a look at them in detail. Our bodies are made up of several parts. The head, neck, trunk, arms, and legs. These parts are held together by a framework called the skeleton. The skeleton is made up of bones, and it gives the body its shape and form. Bones not only support our bodies, but also help to protect important organs. The skull protects the brain. The ribs protect the lungs and heart. The hips protect part of the food canal. The spine protects the spinal cord. There are different types of bones in our bodies. The main support of the body is the backbone, or spine. It is made up of a long row of small bones joined to one another. It is found only in the neck and trunk. The bones of our body are hard, white, and strong. When a bone breaks, new cells begin to grow at the broken ends. More and more new cells are formed until finally the broken ends meet and join together. To find out if a bone is broken, the doctor uses an x-ray machine. This machine can photograph the inside of the body. The photographs it takes are called x-ray photographs. The ribs can be seen clearly from it. There are more than 600 muscles in your body. They make up the flesh that lies between the skin and the skeleton. Muscles can contract and relax. Their contraction 
and relaxation cause body movements. They also push food through the body and make the blood circulate. Now let's see the nervous system. It is made up of three parts, the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. All parts of the body are connected to the brain by nerves. Nerves act like telegraph wires. They carry messages from the different parts of the body to the brain. Then the brain decides on what to do, and it sends messages back to the appropriate parts of the body. This system controls all muscle movement and also controls your senses. So the nervous system is very important because without it, we will not be able to feel, smell, taste, hear, and see. The brain is the most important part of the nervous system. It controls the movements of the body and sends out instructions to all parts of the body. Exercise 11. Inventor of the telephone. Today people can talk to each other even if they are thousands of miles apart. They can hear each other as clearly as if they were in the same room. The man who made this possible was Alexander Graham Bell. His invention is the telephone. The telephone sends the human voice from one end of the world to the other. Bell is famous not only as an inventor. He is also well known as a writer of books to help people who cannot speak or hear. He was a teacher of such people. This made him interested in sound. This interest led to his invention. Alexander Bell was born in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1847. As a boy, he was interested in inventions. He went to the universities of Edinburgh and London. His father and grandfather had both been teachers of deaf people. His father had worked out a system of visible speech. That is a system by which a deaf person can see what people say by reading their lips. Bell learned this system. He soon became a teacher of the deaf and he opened his own school for deaf people in Canada. Through his teaching, Bell became interested in the sound of the human voice. He thought that it should be possible to send sound across a distance. That is what the word telephone means, far sound. With his assistant, Thomas A. Watson, he worked day and night on this idea. They strung wires across several rooms. Each time when they thought that they had found a way, they tried to talk through the wires. Each time they were disappointed. After each failure, they made some changes and tried again. Exercise 12. Inventor of the Telephone. Then one day, in June of 1875, Watson, who was downstairs, heard Bell's voice from the attic. Mr. Watson, please come here. I want you. Watson was so excited that he ran upstairs crying. I heard you, Mr. Bell. I heard you clearly. On that day, the telephone had been invented. The words Bell spoke to Watson was the first telephone message ever sent. Bell and Watson continued to work to improve the telephone. The first long-distance, two-way telephone conversation took place later that same year. It was between Boston and Cambridge, Massachusetts, a distance of two miles. In 1877, a telephone company was formed. The first telephone exchange was opened the next year in New Haven, Connecticut. It had eight lines and 21 telephones. From that time, 
telephone systems grew fast. Two years later, there were over 47,000 telephones in the United States. The telephone spread rapidly, both here and in Europe. Bell lived to see millions of telephones used all over the world. He had the joy of speaking from coast to coast by telephone. He died shortly before telephone service across the ocean was established. His invention brought him wealth and great honors. He was given many medals and honorary degrees. His invention has often been called one of America's greatest gifts to the world. When Alexander Graham Bell died on August 2, 1922, all the telephones in the United States were silent for one minute in memory of a great man.